Hello and welcome to Squad Ops Wednesday event. This time it is Operation Crazy Horse. My name is Mighty and I'll be commentating uh, alongside uh, uh, with me. I have Tedish. Uh, and he will be uh, my uh, my backseat driver for this uh, for this get up. So um, what you're looking at here is um, our One Life Wednesday event. Um, this time, like I said, is Operation Crazy Horse, uh, and the operation uh, is going to go as follows here. Um, first things first, I'm going to go over the assets uh, for Crazy Horse, and the next thing is I'm going to go over just the overview of the op. Um, so the assets for the U.S. team are going to be two AR, one Grenadier, one Lat, and one Medic per squad, one Striker, two Logi trucks, two Mortars, two HMGs. And that's the, the vehicle assets are per team. For Russia, it is two AR, two LAT, one Medic, one BTR-80, one MTLB, and one Trans Truck. All right, so that is the um, asset breakdown for each team. Um, the vehicles are super important, in the, and I would pay heavy attention uh, to the use of those vehicles uh, in this op. The overview for the operation goes something like this. The U.S. have several fob and mortar in place but somewhere near the northeast of the Kohat River. The Russian forces have been tasked with destroying the U.S. fob and eliminating all U.S. forces. U.S. forces have a logistics convoy. And it's moving supplies, and it has to be accompanied by a striker. If the striker goes down, the logi can't be run. The fob can't be supplied. Uh, and so two, on and so forth. One and three are gonna be so, um, before we get into the nitty gritty of everything, like the strategies that they may be using, I want to go over uh, kind of our squad leaders and um, commanders. Our uh, first squad leader is Krusty the Sailor. Next is Kenneth. Next is Burns. Fourth is Jay Remick. And Command of Russia to start off with is Shadow Ritual. And on the US side for this first round, we have. Kirkley, control of first squad. SMP Paradise in control of second squad. Odessa in control of the third squad. Nasty Nate in control of squad four. And Platoon Command is Expit. Um, obviously, if you watch um, our events, you know that um, Expit and Shadowed are both very seasoned commanders. Some of these squad leaders are a little new, so I'm curious to see how they're going to adapt. Um, but most of these guys have been uh, running events um, for a long, long time. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some strategy uh, that uh, they may be using. So this map is uh, Kohat Toy River Valley, and this is the AASV1 uh, variant. Um, obviously, right, I'm back, I'm back. it's a huge map with a central river, um, the vehicles cannot cross the water. Somebody, uh, mean, infantry have uh, pretty much free rain, free movement to, uh, around, um, but vehicles must use bridges. So uh, I would look for that to be um, a major choke point and a major focal point uh, for the uh, advance. Um, Hello? Uh, With that, com check, com check. it's worth uh, mentioning here that the mm -hmm. Russians where, will start down at Maine and probably use this riverbed uh, for some sort of cover. Um, as you can see where the fob is on Jazara, it's a nice high ground. There's high ground all around uh, that side, all around the south. Um, so it's imperative that the Russians try to advance as stealthily as they possibly can. And after uh, we mentioned um, those like vehicle assets, uh, just pay attention. Again, pay attention to um, to those assets. And I want to break them down a little bit before they, we start rolling. So the first one I want to um, take a nice look at here is the BTR-80, which is what I'm staring at right now. BTR-80 um, is an armored personnel carrier. It, it uh, can hold... A 13 infantry, uh, which is a substantial number. Um, it is a actually it's an all-around quality uh, 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 asset to have. It's quick, as you can see. It's got great 
offense, great defense, and they got a decent carrying capacity. It's definitely the focal point for Russia. What you're going to see here, I guarantee, is a lot of long-range engagements between the striker on the U.S. side, which we'll get to in a little bit, and the BTR-80 uh, uh, the BTR on the Russian side. So you'll see a lot of long-range engagements, and it's a lot about placement, uh, where Shadowed Ritual, again, commanding Russia, and Expert commanding U.S., where they decide to put um, their assets at. Key, key things to watch, and it's one thing that might, it probably will give you um, a good amount of over, like insight into um, kind of what goes through the heads of commands. This one I, I know particularly well because um, I've actually commanded this one before. Um, it's a toughie. It's a toughie. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. So follow along with me. Um, likely what's going to happen, again, uh, vehicles uh, must use bridges. So... Bridges are going to be a huge focal point for Russia. I guarantee that much. Um, I would all also be willing to bet that this river that I'm uh, flying across right now is going to be a lot of where the uh, Russians are going to um, be putting their infantry. Because as you can see, if you're running in the middle of this thing, it's really difficult to be spotted, uh, especially if you're moving quickly and uh, and as an organized unit, which um, we're particularly uh, good about. Um, yeah, so this is the the route that I would probably expect them to take. They're either going to go up there or they're going to ramp around this hill that I'm staring at to the north. If you look at the map, they're going to wrap west around this hill, like this direction. And right now you're probably going to be hearing some command comms. They're going to be going back and forth on, on plans, um, how they're going to approach. And you can hear Shadow probably right now on my command com saying you can approach a lot of these places differently. That's one of the things that's really exciting about playing uh, Kohat. Um, this op is, has worked through multiple layers, variations of squad, mostly because it's so huge, it's so wide open, um, and there's so many different ways to approach um, that it's always interesting um, as to how it's going to play out. And it's one reason why you, know, you can use them like... Seemingly over and over. Berg, uh, make sure they have at least a smoke to actually get into the uh, into the compound. Um, yeah, sounds like there's a question about um, whether infantry can uh, use water. In this map, they can cross the water, so infantry have pretty much free reign of movement, other than our movement restrictions, like no jumping on walls and stuff. Uh, but vehicles can't. Uh, the vehicles must be using uh, bridges. Uh, so it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna restrict. Um, some vehicle movement, um, and it's 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 going to put a focal point um, on those bridges, and that's where I'm sure the striker is going to be uh, aiming at. So as we're going to head on over, um, you can see the U.S. scurrying around down here. I want to, as I was highlighting the BTR-80, I actually want to highlight the uh, one of the heavy assets uh, for the U.S. Um, what you're looking at. On this, uh, my screen is the uh, is a striker. Uh, it's kind of the counterpart to the um, the BTR-80. Um, it is very quick. Again, uh, it has a lot of offense, a lot of defensive capability. Slighter, small, like uh, slightly less uh, carrying capacity. Uh, Eleven infantry uh, versus thirteen from the BTR, but it serves roughly the same purpose. Um, long range, high powered, um, fairly maneuverable for the amount of punishment it can take. Um, so, again, expect the BTR and the striker to be uh, really, um, really slugging it out, um, slugging it out this game. The last thing I want to highlight for you guys um, is the kind of the focal point um, of many of our ops, and it's what you're looking at right now. It's the FOB radio. Uh, if, you're, if you're new to squad... Um, you may not know what you're looking at. FOB is a forward operating base. Uh, for this mission, a lot of our missions, the ultimate goal is to destroy this FOB uh, however you can. Um, you can do that by getting close to it and digging it up with shovels. Um, the forward operating base, the key thing to remember about that is it allows placements of deployables. So you're going to see sandbags getting laid down. 
You're going to see lots of stuff like that, fortifications. This radio is what enables all of that to be laid down. Um, it's got about, I think it's 150 um, meter range on it. So anywhere from this radio to 150 meters out, um, it will be able to, you'll be able to lay down um, any kind of deployables, sandbags, um, and has, or in, um, sometimes in placements, depending on the op, things like that. So it looks like we are live in one minute. So I'm going to head on over to uh, the Russian side. And we will uh, we'll follow them along uh, once they push off in about uh, 60 seconds. All right, and the last piece now that we're going live uh, that I want to highlight for you is what I'm following right here, which is the MTLB NSVT. Um, it is an armored personnel carrier. Um, obviously, it's got one very large machine gun on top of it. Um, the big thing about the MTLB is it's a lot slower than the BTR, obviously. Um, it is uh, a bit less of an offensive capability. It's got like a good, solid defensive capability, but the big thing is it can hold up to 19 people. Um, this is super important in our ops because, especially on Kohat, as I mentioned, where maneuver it, the map is massive, so maneuverability um, is very key. And as we're rolling out here, we're actually going to throw up the uh, operation overlay uh, one more time, just so you guys can kind of see what's going on, the uh, the overview uh, of the op where the U.S. forces have set up a FOB and mortar emplacement, and I'm going to pull up my map, and it's right here in Jazara. Uh, it is uh, east of the river. Um, the Russians that I'm following right now have been tasked with destroying the U.S. FOB and eliminating all U.S. forces. Uh, and the U.S. forces have a logistics convoy moving between them and their main base that has to be accompanied by a striker. So uh, that's important to note that if the striker goes down, the logic can't run, so it must be accompanied by the striker. All right, out, out, I'm gonna take a look, command. All right, we're gonna watch these. These guys all dismount, get sorted. Tedish, I know you've done this op through probably many variations of it. How do you think it's going to play out? Jack, I'm coming to the Sorry, I'm having some serious internet problems here. That's why I've been sorted over here. Um, yeah, this one's going to be interesting because they got to find the fob first, right? And uh, and then figure out where it is. So sometimes this can uh, kind of turn into the classic whirlwind. Uh, if people are familiar with that op where everyone knows where the fob is. Um, but, uh, I'm going to try yeah. to fix my stuff here so I can get back in the game. <laughs> but it's, yeah. It always turns into a good op. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and this one has changed a lot. Um, this one's changed a lot as, as the game's changed, as we've added more vehicles in, as the layers have changed. We used to play this one where the U S where the U S was assaulting. Um, and they started all the way up at the, the, their Western base. Um, so it was like a totally different thing. We allow a little more flexibility with uh, with this one, however. We used to. I might have to restart here real quick. This is getting 
Um, My computer's being so extremely so finicky. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, we used to uh, run this opera. You could select one of a few locations, but we're kind of opening it up uh, to not uh, set grids necessarily, but just anywhere that you see fit that's east uh, east of the river. And currently they've picked Jazara, which is um, uh, far, far east. And it's on a nice hill. You, prob you may have s seen it uh, when I hovered over there last time. So one nice thing that uh, we can we'll probably see in this is the uh, what twin mortars from the U.S. as well as you know potentially twin uh, machine guns, um, and who made those mortars? That can always you know always leads to nice cinematic explosions. But uh, how effective they are, you know, it's always it's always down to the operators, down to the spotters, down to whoever is uh, uh, commanding all that stuff. Yeah, wow, yeah, was, squad is being yeah, super yeah, difficult. Here, restart. It keeps uh, keeps giving me the too many copies running. So I'll be right back. Sounds good. Um, yeah, as Ted just pointed out, though, the um, I've seen no, I've seen fire. mortars kill any any type of vehicle, whether it's Lodgy, MTLB, uh, and obviously plenty of of foot mobiles. So um, concentrating those fire. Uh, those fire missions is really important. As you can hear them popping off a little bit. Sounds like they're heading south of Burns. Uh, which, if we look at the map here, Burns is down here, so they're hitting way south. But they'll range them in. Uh, as I mentioned, you know the mortars don't get infinite ammo. They do have ammo points provided by that fob radio. Uh, but the the um, Russian, or excuse me, the U.S. do get infinite, as long as the Lodgy's alive and the Striker's alive, as the Striker needs to be escorting the Lodgy, um, as long as they're both alive, they can run as many times as they want from uh, the U.S. main all the way down to Jazara. And it's a pretty short trip, so I would not expect those mortars to be running out of ammo anytime soon. Which is... can be bad for the Russians, and this is one thing about this map, is you want to keep moving so that they can't range those mortars in no, right on top of you. Or else, yeah, it's bad news. Uh, and the, the defense here uh, for um, the U.S. seems to be pretty standard. Seems to be pretty standard. Um, they, they're playing one off the point and everyone else on, although it sounds like uh, the U.S. might have lost their striker. It may have flipped over. Um, which is another hazard of this map is it's really tough to drive on. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's on fire, uh, which is a big problem uh, for the U.S. because that's going to leave that BTR pretty much unchallenged, other than the the dual la or the lats that uh, U.S. have. But the range on those uh, isn't uh, you know spectacular as many of you play squad know. Uh, All in the striker. As you can see, yeah, they're trying to flip it, but it's not happening. So that, and you know what? It seems kind of, uh, it seems kind of um, cheesy, or seems kind of lame that they flip it. But that's all part of the skill, man. That's all. You got to bring everything when you come to these maps. Um, and driving on this map is is not easy. What the? Wait, from what I understand, um, from what I understand, we can only lodge like whatever is there. We can only like deposit. The like, Russians are just kind of sitting they're tight. Gonna, they they're just dismounting. They're trying to probably spot the striker, which I think they have, and I think they probably see that it's maybe not in the best shape. But they're just trying to get their bearings right now. Um, they are fairly spread. They've got one, uh, two. Uh, Two squads four well, really one squad with, with the BTR is kind of pushing probing across the east while the other two squads are um, holding down here. Let me go find these guys up north. Um, this is where a lot of engagements will happen, and I would actually be surprised um, if they go much longer without being spotted because the Jazara Hill is pretty a pretty good vantage point. Um, although radio might be a little better, and they're not on it, so they actually may be concealed from Jazara for right now. Want the BTR to follow you? Big help. 
Uh, I'm not seeing anything just yet. Hold on. All right, so um, the Russian command, uh, the SL comms are calling out. Chikar looks clear, uh, which is accurate. So good call from them. So they're just trying to they're trying to nose out like where this fob can be. And there's really only a few like great spots for it. Um, they're making good calls so far. I'm not even sure if they got spotted. They're coming across that bridge. It's possible, but. Um, the Jazara flag, while it is close to Maine, uh, as you can see on this map, it is close to Maine. It, it's also kind of blo it's blocked in view. Basically, this is what I'm looking at right now is a radio. This is the radio tower right here and the hill around it, and it's tall. And Jazara is pretty much blocked from view north uh, northwest. They actually don't have many eyes um, looking northwest, so it could be an issue if the Russians move quick enough. So one's going to be on the north, infantry two and four are going to be on the west, three are on the uh, south. That's how we're going to approach this from now. And we're going to just shift the, line, shift the line north to south, moving east. Anywhere northeast of the river. Like literally any compound northeast of the river. It's a big area. That's why I take this, this, this op runs, like the beginning's really slow, but then it fucking picks up. And the replayability is just... Insane because it's so open. Yeah. I like that creep one. You're moving good. All right. Yeah. So my guess is that Russia probably initially expected a fob near we radio. A um, to, it's a pretty comfortable position to put it, although it is obviously exposed. Um, but that, that's not a, a, a atypical place to be putting the fob radio down. So I think they just scouted. They, they just scouted that one out. Probably saw nothing, so they're gonna go continue on north and wrap around to the east, uh, and check out the rest of the northern part of the map. All right, so I am back. Hope it sounds okay. Can everyone, hear me. All right, confirmation that you can actually hear me now. I'm back. Got everything launched. Don't know what was up with that. But uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the uh, kind of the northern group here. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if my camera's working yet. It doesn't look like. Uh, let's see if I can get that through to Pen. At my internet, this decided to be very difficult. I think they might have cut some cables or something. They're doing some work on the street outside, and uh, <laughs> you might be living suddenly, an op in real life, buddy. <laughs> suddenly, it's getting weird out there. But, uh, yeah, so looks like we got the BTR heading north, looking it out, looking out for. Whatever's up here. So where have the U.S. set up here? Looks like they're way to the east. Yeah, they're on the Jazara Hill, which kind of what was we were talking about was that if like the Jazara view is blocked by the radio tower, uh, the radio tower uh, hill, which is that giant hill to the northwest. So really, the only v like group that might be in view as we hear the mortars starting to land, uh, the only group that might be in view is a southern squad. Everyone else is pretty obscured by hills. These mortars are landing uh, pretty much on Mod Zai proper. So kind of splitting everyone currently. So let's start ranging them in. The best way to use mortars on this map, I think, is to just zone them into a kill zone and just totally deny that area. Um, rather than trying to snipe someone with them. These are so difficult on this map to get ranges correct. Oh, and they're just great for keeping heads down, too. It's really yep. surprising if, if anyone hasn't played or been under heavy mortar fire. And I know we always have uh, people that are watching this for the first time saying, what squad, what squad ops? Those mortars are um, very dramatic when they start ran landing around you. It's uh, really surprising, especially when you know you only have one life. Uh, that can really change the way you're going to return fire or even poke your head out of a sandbag. So it looks like there's maybe just some ranging shots there. Hey, can I still drop a rally for Burns? Uh, yeah, yep, we they're working there. Any, any flyovers of the U.S. base here? Looks like they've got one uh, machine gun bunker kind of poking out to the northwest. 
Oh, more mortars going out. We got both of them up. They're firing a full salvo here. They're calling the mortars out that they're that they're uh, sending them towards. So the Russians are aware. We can hear them coming in. You know, in and right below me. So this is again what this is where the mortars are hitting is where the other squad was previously, and they've moved. So that's kind of what I'm saying is um, it's it's both a difficult map to move well on because it's you can get seen from a lot of places, but it's also giant. So when they're what they're doing is good. They're continuing to move around and dodging those mortars. Um, Dodging that splash and really even the suppression. So because sure, like Tedish, no, like, like, like you mentioned, the, with the one life stuff, man, it's uh, you don't want to take a mortar to the face. That's for sure. Yep, yeah, it definitely so changes changes everything. You hear those mortars go off, and you either duck cover, cover or yeah. your squad leader will be like, "Hey, move! We got thirty <laughs> seconds before those things yeah. hit. Move, move, move." But I don't know if you heard any reports of the Russians that that Lodgy just exploded. The one that was, or the, the striker exploded, it was flipped. So did they hear that? Did anyone report that in? Uh, yeah, I think they saw it. Um, we saw it on stream as well. That that, that thing uh, made an unfortunate end. Uh, oh, Jack, on stream. Yes, the, uh, right. The, uh, Jack the Reynolds yeah. might have heard that explosion. From like, well, what I remember, Jack Reynolds called out that he spotted the striker. So uh, I'm pretty sure that they're aware of the uh, striker being down. Got it. Tons of comms going off. Krusty uh, actually spotted an emplacement, so I'm pretty sure they have a decent idea of uh, where where this is. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to him try and um, describe where he's seen this emplacement. He's saying it's really far, which is yeah, it's it's over near the bottom of Jazar. So yeah, this is one of the maps where you can definitely. S see the furthest and you open up your map and you're like oh it's one range over wait is that one range over or two ranges over so it's yeah yeah i mean hard, hard trying to move east sure. as best you can. You yeah i mean well play. first off welcome to everyone who so right may not know what squad or squad ops is uh, um so one, we're glad to have you here first. um something to know on this map specifically and anyone who's played this map probably knows is that it's really hard to range. I mean, because you're looking over valleys, and what can what you think might be like, ah, it's 300 meters, is actually 500. And so it's super difficult. And so I'm listening. The reason I bring it up is I'm listening to them call the positions, and they're a little they're a little off. So I'm not sure if they know exactly what's going on. Ooh, those mortars are walking in. Oh yeah, they're moving now. Getting close. Those were good, good hits uh, a minute ago. Right. Again, bring it up. Keep moving. And that's another benefit of that MCLB is that it can hold 19 uh, passengers. So um, it's easy or easier at least to um, shuffle around uh, and, and stay ahead of uh, the fire in the view. Ooh, look at that. Jesus, they're crawling. Ooh, stay down. All right, three C's enemy is about uh, four clicks out to the northeast. Yeah, I'm seeing guys on that. Uh, they're like a tall, tall hill, like just out in the open. Uh, break on, break on, break on. Remick, 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 be advised. There's contacts directly up the hill from you, about 100, 200 meters over. Cut. They're on top of the hill that you're pushing up right now. Two, get your get your AR down that way. Try and uh, suppress them if four comes into contact from the uh, flank. Don't fire until they start shooting, they, though. That 120? Yeah, 126. You see the next hill over? That's level with us? That's where they are. There's four on top of that hill. Oh, I see it. Ooh, that 50 cal's opening up. Yeah, and there's a 50 cal. And yeah. yeah. was just taking some shots there. They this could be... Yeah, got eyes on that 50. This could be gnarly. I mean, so I think that they spotted the guys that are on top of this um, this hill that we're looking at right now. Yeah, as those mortars continue to be just behind, the 50 opens up. That MTLB is in a tough spot right now. Yeah, that, you know, that is one thing that we kind of highlighted was that it takes a lot of hits, but it the offensive capabilities of the MTLB are maybe not what you would have with a BTR or a striker. Um, so 
as far as one versus one against a, a 50 cal that's being spotted with uh with binoculars i mean i, I don't see it doing super great yeah, that, that's gonna be tough especially yeah. when they know they got mortars coming in too so they're they're under pressure to move and that'll make mistakes oh that mortar close. wounded wow Wow, wow, wow. That is so close. And I I mean, though, a couple of hits on an MTLB with those will severely oh, damage. Again, won't one direct hit kill? I believe one direct hit will kill a vehicle. Yeah, I mean, they, 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 I mean, direct hit, but even the splash damage, I'm pretty sure it will do some damage. And it's important, again, to note that unlike what you might be used to um, in regular squad, in our ops, um, there's no rearming or repairing. So every bullet you fire, um, should have a purpose and every hit you take on a vehicle um, is permanent I mean there's no repair in that so um, even if you're able to get one lad hit on a vehicle and maybe it uh, doesn't kill it um, it's totally worth it yeah same thing as, uh, as medics you can heal people but once they're down they're out that's another one that we get asked a lot yep Along with, I don't know if you went over it earlier but uh, one of the other differences between vanilla, besides uh, the scenarios that we set up, is the no optics. So besides red dots, um, it really extends all the firefights a little bit. Makes it a yeah, little that's bit actually a good point. As the MTOB uses that optic um, on the vehicle to zoom in, pounding a couple. Who is this up here? Muff, Pigeon, Nasty Nate. Is Muff up there too? Yep, there's three up there and they're just nice and prone. They're trying to get that fire base set up, but uh, Pigeon, you're to right no avail so far. Yeah, well, that's a good... 50, the 50 cal, the 50 fire yeah. can now take down... Oh, they did, look, the 50 is unbuilt right now. Uh, so yep. that MPLB shot it and damaged it enough where they're actually going to have to take out their shovels to uh, get it back firing again. Yeah, good point. So the, the, the mortars that you can hear that are landing um, serve two purposes. I mean, and also obviously vehicles. The, the Everything you can place in this game can also be destroyed by other things other than shovels, by grenades... Um, sandbags can be blown up by lat like we have the U the U.S. has a grenade launcher and a lat kit. Those can both blow up sandbags and other structures. Um, so it's a little more. Uh, you got to be careful when you put those emplacements because not only can you shoot the people out of them, but you can blow up the emplacements themselves. And let's see. Uh, Aragon asking a question on the stream: Why vehicle? Why vehicles cross the river? Is there some border? And uh, no, there's no border in the game. It's still vanilla. We just place it um, to create a little bit more realism. It, you know, you wouldn't have vehicles crossing Until major rivers. And drops. granted, in this, it's only shin deep because they haven't added deep water on most of these maps. So we just make it so the vehicles don't run. Make some constraints a little more realistic. Yeah, there's some realism, and there's also just some game good, things that make good gameplay. And adding the bridges, especially on this this map. Maybe doesn't um, it, it just adds a little focus to the fire and the placement for um, for different for the emplacements for the defenders. So um, it usually ends up being pretty exciting. And then LavTech to answer your question, he's asking who's streaming, Mighty, and yeah, it's correct, Mighty is streaming when I'm finished. You're late, Hello. late to the party, but I'm I made it. Got a BTR up there too. I'm telling you the BTR is over there. Some shots being traded here by uh, Jeremic and Amin style up to, I think, Killbox on top of this hill. Um, so they're starting to, to um, kind of feel each other out and feel uh, feel around where where uh, everyone else is. Um, if we zoom out and we head to the map, we can kind of see this nice battle line going on uh, through all of the Russians. They're all sweeping across uh, really effectively. Um and kind of clearing this entire because again, remember that the radio hide can be anywhere on the eastern of uh, the eastern side of this river. So they're kind of checking everything. Oh, they've kind of zoned in on Jazara. I think. The river here uh, looks like Odessa's squad. Is Odessa's squad leading here? Yes. Um, she is coming in off flank on that MTLB here in the far south. That is actually so. Unnoticed. So and it was even unnoticed by by me. I mean, I didn't see until I opened the map um, that they and they're on this perfect ridge firing down. And not only do they have a shots in the MTLB, but they've got shots on this other uh, 
these other foot mobiles, uh, Juzo, Burns, DJ, Danny, all in the river. Um, and they've got probably good shots on them too. So who do we got moving down? The two lats or the one lat? Yeah, so we got Saloon coming down here with Sightless trying to assassinate this MTLB. Command, what's that? It's effective living cut. Good. Like I mentioned, it's so important to put lat shots on the vehicles, even if you can't get a kill, because it will do heavy damage. It'll change That's the way that they play, for sure. Yes, and it's, and it's not repairable. Yeah, you get hit once with a vehicle, all of a sudden, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, let's not do anything crazy here. Yeah. Sightless and Saloon. Using that oh, oh, the mortar hits right on. That's gonna, oh, see. he's gonna walk him straight in. Wow, Saloon. look at the damage. It's on fire. The splash damage on this MTLB. It drops on right on top wow, of the MTLB. Right what mortar fire. Oh, That was great. That was excellent. But Saloon not five minutes. Not Saloon five minutes. I <laughs> didn't get to shoot. He didn't get a shot, but... Uh... <laughs> not okay, five Saloon. minutes after we talk about how... Splash damage from those mortars can kill lots of stuff, whether it's footballs or vehicles. It does it, man. It hammers that MTLB. It was a really Second good call. Round coming down on the corpse. Yeah. <laughs> Finishing the job. It was a really good call by um, leadership from the uh, defenders. Don't crest it yet. Let me take a look. All right. So now we've got some closer. Oh, the flank from the south. Infantry fire lighting those guys up on the ridge. Ouch. One, two, three kills. One, FX 100, 1000, the last survivor up there. He is in a bad spot. Real yeah. bad. Yeah. He's running. <laughs> oh, God. Run. <laughs> oh, oh, there he goes. That was, firing. that was a literal firing squad. A whole... Fires team up high, seven guys up high, two guys down low. Yeah. Oh, was, Sightless and Saloon, though, got spotted by Jack. He puts a shot on one of them. Down below that bridge. Yeah, that, that man, that flank on, up the uh, ridge is so smart. So wow, smart. And that, they had a fire team moving in in the river that I thought was going to. It was going to penetrate pretty deep, and uh, that engagement turned them around. Those guys turned around, now they're going to. Work on that flank from Odessa. Yeah, and speaking of flanks, we've got uh, we've got the Russians up here. Uh, this is, I believe, Matter Squad. Um, they are taking some contacts, um, and they're moving on the flank uh, of the main FOB area. So they got a nice hill to work with. Uh, but that's also a blessing and a curse, as you can see. Uh, Immune style almost died, getting healed back up by the medic after uh, dropping a bandage on himself. Taking shots back and forth. This is really why I'm glad Tedish pointed out that there's no optics uh, in our ops because this would be a lot different uh, if they're entirely were... different. Yeah. So What's right now, third? ooh, as the BTR <laughs> lays lays down the law on uh, Walrus and Eggle over there. Sneaky, um, watch that west. Sneaky, watch our west. Don't let a lag come up on us. This engagement is it, it all needs to serve a purpose of movement rather than sniping at them. Uh, and trying to get a couple cheeky kills. Four, it's all about movement. Um, so every engagement you take needs to have a purpose here. One, let's keep moving. We've got we've got a BTR support. Four, move off the yeah, This whole north, southern southern yeah, advance north. is stalled completely. It's These all due to that. Were, we're so far up the river, and then that flank came in and smashed. You know, a fire team, and all of a sudden, whoop! Right, hold on. Let's reevaluate that advance. Uh, yeah, so smart. Looks uh, like um, the squad's getting marked with blue smoke, just so everyone everyone's aware of uh, where Matter's squad was. But I think Matter uh, may be deceased, as it were. Um, so let me, let me take a look. It looks like this is where Krusty is. I just got tagged. I just got tagged. I'm about to go. Where's that contact coming from for you two and three? Where are y'all getting contact from? Out of, from? out of bandages. Can Man. you send that guy down? The team chat, the squad no, chat is just that. constant down here. This is good communication. I've got them really low, so I can't always make out what they're saying, but they are yeah. just barking back and forth destructively. It's great. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. We're Ooh. taking a look at where Matter some... and Krusty Squad is, which is way up north, wrapping around, getting the far flank in. Sightless here is, uh, he just watched an entire fire team walk by him. Uh, where is he at? Down that, by that bridge still? Down at the southern, yeah. He survived under the bridge, and then, uh, he's hiding here in this, in this rush. And I'm almost positive he saw four guys walk by him, although he's not looking in the right direction. <laughs> yeah, so another good thing to point out is, without optics, it's a lot harder to get kills at range, which means... The info that you're gathering is definitely more important, and the info that you're gathering and the info that you're giving up to them is probably more important than trying to get like some crazy snipe kill. Um, it's usually better to scout out, uh, move, keep scouting, move, especially on Kohat like this, um, rather than getting into some crazy long-range gunfight. At some point, though, oh, I mean, short, short to medium range, you see that sweet. That's so tempting. It's, it's, it's so hard out. not to take the shots, and I think we've all it's fallen road, victim to that. It's like, yeah, no, you shouldn't your, your shoot. Squad, but squad one right now. You just yeah, it's hard. It's hard not. To. <laughs> Speaking from personal experience, there. Yeah, <laughs> same, yeah, I'm with you. I, I it's fun, always fun to, to go after those long shots, but sometimes, especially if you're the squad leader, it's not worth it because you will get shot at. Uh, the will return fire onto you, so. The southern flank's about to get dirty over here. Got that fire team still up on the hill, and we got a, a, a fire team of Russians moving up on the Americans. They're they're gonna get real uh, exposed on both sides here once someone spots them out because they're between a fire team and on the other side they got the entire like American firebase. Yeah, they're walking up this hill totally exposed. I I I. Yeah, I, I mean, I, these, there's two flanks going on simultaneously from each team. It's all part of this map. It's so large. I'd really love to know who's leading this fire team. Because that was a bold call. Yeah, so what you're looking at right now is um, Krusty, uh, Krusty Squad is flanking north. They see, I mean, I'm sure that they see a ton of... Uh, American troops over here, so they're probably just gonna try to see what they can do and adjust. I can't. XF must have seen them. Oh wow! <laughs> just as I look at XF, he takes one through the eye. That was brutal. <laughs> and here comes Krusty Squad engaging uh, all the way back up north. We got two poles of this map. I got some close Links combat going up here. Oh, finally that, that Russian squad got spotted. Woo. There we go. Okay, now they know each other are there. Maybe. Grenades are coming out. Oh, that grenade. Too far. Huh. Firebase sees them now. Yeah, okay, now it's finally coming how it's supposed to. Finally dealing with that firebase on the north. Uh, on this this engagement up 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 north is getting pretty extreme. Uh, lots of shots going back and forth between the two. But now you see the BTR. The BTR knows it's got a bead on these American troops. If there's a little bit of confidence in this uh, in the gunner here, he can poke his way out. Maybe get some shots. We have a hold command from the BTR. <sighs> Yep, so BTR knows, drops one. Got the re You can see uh, with the, this x-ray cam that we have, um, he drops another one that everyone immediately prones when the BTR starts shooting. Uh, even if he's not hitting anything, which he actually is, um, everyone is <laughs> pretty afraid. This thing is like a shark in the water, um, when, uh, especially at range like this. It's so hard for the lads to deal with. Down in the south, those two fire teams met up, uh, pretty much obliterated each other. We're down to what two and two left. We got two Russians that have survived, and then Silas and uh, Silas and Nukem. They don't really know where, where each other are. Yeah, I think that's probably a win for. It's probably a win for the. Um... 
I think Attackers. I think the Americans came came out ahead on that one. Um, they they definitely Russia. came out ahead as far as numbers, but th if they didn't get cleared off that ridge, they would have been pretty dead in the water. Russians would have at least. Let's see. Yeah, and the scores are. Let's see. Uh, the Russians have twenty three dead, and the Americans have sixteen. So the Americans are up right, uh, a little bit, but it's not insurmountable at this point. Watch, uh, yeah, and. When you get close in, I mean, you, you got to remember that the Russians still have the BTR available too. So if you get close in and you get some lucky kills and some lats, I mean, then the BTR becomes unstoppable. I, I don't know if the BTR is going to be that effective on this one because it's got to get in so close to clear out those, at least where it is now. I mean, if it was down in the southern, southern side of the valley, um, it would have some firing avenues. But where it is up there? Yeah. I'm a little surprised to see it track all this far north. Um, I think it would make. I think they probably should have adjusted. They definitely knew where the fob was at a certain point, and probably should have shifted the BTR so where you could fire across a valley rather than having to. Because the only way it's going to get shots on is if it goes super far to the east over here, uh, or um, it noses over the the lip of the hill, and that's just like easy. Pickings where, for lats. Where is the BTR? I'm, I'm trying to find it here. I'm, I'm tracking it uh, way up north. I'm set. It's pretty much following uh, Krusty's super flank around the um, northern side. They're probably north northeast of the um, radio out, right now. Uh, Looks like. Holy oh, shit. Moff is about to go down to sneaky. <laughs> oh, here it goes. Oh! Got it on camera. Put him down. <laughs> I don't think, I gotta be honest, I don't think the US knows where, that there's Russians up here. Like, I'm Not shocked. The hell above it. Yeah, I mean, I'm shocked um, that I'm talking about North. This is Krusty. I think I'm looking at, yeah, this is Krusty. I mean, he's running with his binoculars out. Just, he's just, run, yeah, he's running with his binoculars out. Like, I mean, he's. Totally, um, totally like unmolested up there. Uh, his squad is. So apparently, my my game just crashed. So or something. Um, server. Just oh, crashed. interesting. Interesting way. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> that's uh, that's a rough one. Where's Where's Barton? <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone, oh. give me a blame Barton. Everyone, blame, blame Barton. That's the. I think that is that the first time we ever had a server crash in the middle of an op like that, like dead center. Wasn't at the end. Wasn't it like. I think that's yeah, the first I, time I've. I've I think I've done. Um, uh, I, th I I think I've done over a hundred ops probably. I don't think that's ever happened. Yeah, that's unfortunate. So let's see what's going on here for a second, guys. And while we're waiting, if anyone has any questions about squad, squad ops, whatever, go ahead and ask them in chat. Uh, we'll uh, we'll let you know what's up. I was looking pretty good uh, as it goes for uh, for the, um, the uh, the attacking the Russians. They saw that BTR up, no striker to worry about. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and they had they had a couple guys in really really deep. I was just about to call it out that they were man, they were like in the buildings, and I'm pretty sure they were undetected. Um, and then they had the squad above coming down. I think the Americans had the numbers, but I think the Russians had a great position. Yeah, I mean... Hard to call. I, I can't believe that the Russians weren't spotted or adjusted to. Like, I mean, right right at the end there, Krusty was running, <laughs> was running with his binoculars out, just like jogging along, like probably 200 meters from the, the enemy fob, and there was no one over there, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, not know sure who, exactly how that happened. Who was running the mortars? You know, I didn't actually see. Uh, I didn't see, and I didn't know if they were going to connect with anything because they kept trailing just behind, just behind. Um, Rush was doing a good job of moving, and as soon as that MTLB stood still, I mean, that was an accurate volley of uh, mortars. <laughs> That's how you use those things, man. As soon as they stopped moving, got dropped right on that MTLB. That was crazy. Yeah, that was... That was, I think it's, 
Uh, I think we've had a direct mortar hit before on a, on a heavy vehicle like that in an op, but... Uh, yeah, you want to know who that was? That was yours truly. Uh, <laughs> I definitely got blasted. <laughs> oh, you were in the vehicle. Okay, it was in the MTLB. <laughs> I forget uh, uh, which app is it. It's on the new uh, the new Eho. Uh, we were attacking um, attacking refinery and we were pushing around the north side and we already took a couple lat hits. So we were on like one HP and boom, and then just that thing just dropped right on our heads. Luckily, it was just it was just me and one other person in there. It wasn't the whole squad or anything. But uh, yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was me. Unfortunately, not that I've ever lost an op, guys. Not that I've ever lost an op. <laughs> Never. Yeah, this uh, no, this not. op has this op has changed, um, well, as new assets and new layers and stuff uh, come out. Um, it's been interesting. Let's see, we got a couple of questions. One, do I know? Do we know anything about the next update? Um, not three weeks. Not, yeah, <laughs> hashtag three joke. weeks. That's the joke, I right? Mean, someone, yeah, someone don't believe when someone says three weeks. That's a uh, that's the running joke that it's, yeah. it's like Half Life Two is coming out, or Half Life Three or whatever is, you whatever. Yeah, no one knows when it's yes. done, right? Yes. <laughs> so I, I want to take that that opportunity for that question to say that we don't. I mean, no one really knows like what is the next update, like or when. Um, but we we did have a talk with um, some uh, OWI developers. I think it was Iron Taxi specifically. If I remember correctly, yes, it was Iron Taxi uh, on our podcast that uh, Creeping runs, um, which is the Opscast. Um, you can find links to that uh, in our um, Discord, but it's uh, I think it's opscast.podbean.com if you're curious to go. Like he didn't obviously give super like hashtag leaks specific, but he kind of gave you know his general thoughts on like where the game is going. So that might answer some of those questions, although we can't really answer them in particularly like fine grained detail. So yeah, so the, another question was how the mortars landing, and yeah, I think they're getting uh, answered in the chat. But uh, whoever was firing <laughs> those blew up on LTLB, and I think I think I saw it get one infantry kill or at least some wounds. Other than that, yeah. Uh, so let's just say accurately. Yeah, yeah, it was. They were, they were impressive. They were, and they always look great. At least on my yeah, love it. Definitely. Um, <laughs> uh, sound like someone was asking, is this game still in alpha? Yeah, I mean, yes, it is an alpha. Um, they've been kind of, uh, OWI, um, has been a little coy with release dates. Um, I, I think like, hopefully this game will come out this calendar year. Um, we'll see, but, uh, for, I mean, I've played enough early access games and this is one, I mean, yeah, I'm here, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here casting and uh, like a crazy, like, like hardcore event to like six platforms with all you got, like, I mean, you can tell, like, we all love this game, man. Like, this is, like, one of those early access games that's something special, and they've been delivering um, consistent on awesome updates. Um, that, that That's what keeps a lot of people coming back, um, as well as, community. yeah, yeah, community, obviously. I mean, generally, people are pretty mature. They're like, Squad isn't necessarily, like, a super arcadey game, so it, it's kind of a barrier for entry for a lot of people, and people enjoy that. And then, you know, that's just Squad itself, and then Squad Ops is, like, a whole other level beyond that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great community. Hard to be yeah. one of the best I've ever been, been with at all. Definitely. And speaking of community... Um, someone was asking, uh, how do you get an ops tag? Um, and to get an ops tag, everyone that you see with an ops tag on um, is someone who has been in our ops, on our servers, and in our Discord. Then take that to mean generally part of the community, um, a positive part of the community um, for a while. Um, and a that, regular and, part of the community, yeah. Right. Uh, hence why they're called, everyone that has the ops tag, uh, we, we, we call them regulars and then it's a it's it's a part of um it's like everyone who makes up this community who makes like things run that's all of you guys but these guys are the ones who specifically have been you know a dedicated regular part of of contributing to um to squad ups um and that's something that if you're just around enough there's no 
there's no skill requirement. There's no um, hour, like specific hour requirement. Someone in staff will take notice, I guarantee, if you're a positive, um, yeah, hopefully in a positive, positive. yeah, a positive part of the community and, and we'll reach out. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's how you get those sweet, sweet ops tags. And then mixed in everyone that has an ops tag is a regular. And then there's also staff and admins. There's no differentiation um, between a regular and a, and a staff and admin besides just knowing who's who. And then of course, if you go on Discord, you can figure out who's who with the different colors and, and all that. But in game, um, it's all it's all the same. Yeah, we're not a clan. Yeah, yeah, we, we are a community through and through. I mean, there's no rank. I mean, some staff, uh, our staff, but there's we're staff purely because we want to help give back to the community, um, which is you know at all of you guys. Um, it's not uh, it's not a rank thing uh, or a clout thing. Um, it's specifically because you guys make this so awesome by coming out to streams, participating in events. Um, you know we want to give back um, and put in some of our our own personal hours to to help these things uh, move along. So. So I'm looking for a server and I'm not seeing the event server up. I'm seeing one we'll person <laughs> join we'll the party server. Yeah, yeah, we'll let them let them sort it out soon. Work the magic. Um, yeah, someone asked um, keyboard versus controller. I've never heard of anyone playing this game with a controller. I heard um, someone the other day trying to play with a controller, and everyone in the squad was like, "Wait, what? You, it's you so what? It's so crazy." <laughs> How, why would you do that to yourself? But yeah, I, I, I mean, you have so many keys. I mean, you have three keybinds just to talk to people. You know what I mean? I can't imagine that you'd have enough on a controller. But that's just me. And without the auto aim, I mean, it's you're, it's so tough. You're not. Let's just say you're probably not one tapping with irons at 500 meters with a controller just like our own very own you could like muscle. dedicate to uh, a taxi you could drive around just fine <laughs> <But that's laughs> all-time logi driver yeah <laughs> some people love that logi driving with the wheel controller craigasm i i gotta say i have a wheel i should try does that work i don't even that, no, there's, that doesn't work what am i talking about i want that to work that sounds amazing you could probably set it up <laughs> if you were really inclined but uh, yeah it you just get a nice, you get a nice chair that <laughs> that leans back. You just grab a drink, just chilling, driving Lodgy. Sounds awesome. <laughs> Sounds cathartic. <laughs> We're waiting here. Um, if you guys are just joining or just getting back, there was a small hiccup with the server, which um, I've never seen before, actually. Um, and it's important to point out, obviously, um, that with the small hiccup on the server, we actually are moving to a different uh, way of hosting servers so we can improve the tick rate um, and make everyone's experience the best we can. So there are hiccups here and there. Um, most of them have been ironed out, but sometimes stuff like this will happen. But we're working behind the scenes to figure out what, what was going on. I think the end result, uh, it, the reward is a smooth 80-player um server and i think that's worth so yeah absolutely let's um let's keep taking a couple questions if anyone has any questions um yeah, you can go ahead and post them did the server crash the answer is yes yes that's why we uh, on a hiatus here not nah, hiatus. We're 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 just a Q and A session. You're the Q star, yeah, Tedish. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's a question for you, Mighty. What's your favorite underdog kit or weapon in squad or vehicle? Underdog. Yeah. All right. So not like a grenade launcher. Yeah. Exactly. <sighs> when you want to go trolling, you know, having fun on the white list, what do you do? Raider. Raider. Yeah, I should try that. I've never PPSH. I've it it's so P bad. It's <laughs> it's it, it's love. PPSH is love in life. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I think it 
it doesn't it only works you know a couple maps but um i think the at grenades just gave you like a little more versatility i've actually put them to use a couple times i specifically remember one op we had where this was a very long time ago on samari uh i don't i don't know if you remember this but someone tried to throw a an anti-tank grenade and they have a different trajectory than the regular grenades and it hit the wall and blew two people up <laughs> <laughs> I think I do remember that. Yeah, that is that was a back when they first came into the game, right? Yes, that was that was um a long time ago. Uh, that that's that is funny. So I think just you can get some some crazy um you can get some crazy moments with that thing. Um, the PPSH, if you just burst just a little bit, I mean it'll take it, the fire rate is so fast. Uh, if you're close, I mean it'll take anything down, and you can get a yeah, bunch of people. So with that thing is it does it even have semi on it? Oh yeah, it's got semi-auto. It's okay. not very effective, but uh, um, because it's not shooting. Let's just say it's not shooting high caliber rounds, deadish. It uh, might be like a BB gun at a certain range. <laughs> you might be able to catch the bullet out of the yeah, air. <laughs> but up close, the thing is fun. Um, I think that's one of my favorite like underrated kits. I'm seeing 60 people in the Barton Broken server, so I'm going to hop in there and see what's going on. Wow, interesting, because that's funny, because Barton did break it. How about that? This is what you guys get when we when we go to Barton cam. It has to come back somewhere. Right. <laughs> the karma has to be rolled back. Here it is. Oh, no, I said karma. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> nice background music guys hey hey thanks I, i'm actually i'm not sure who picked that who picked that music oh, it is pretty good oh no that's the one that karma has oh oh no never mind i'm sorry i asked <laughs> ask a stupid question you know what you get that not the answer you're looking for <laughs> so have we heard anything about whether we're going to try to replay round one my guess is we'll probably roll into round two based on the time yeah round that would be roll past two hours for both sides um and the, and the thing yeah. is is this op is also very slow <laughs> um because it's such a huge map so it already takes um, takes a while. So we'll see. I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure what's going on. Let's see. Lab Tech with another question here, and Juan Tap. Uh, Juan Tap. The server crashed uh, right in the middle of the round. Right in the middle of a great round. Um, and Lab Tech squats. Would you would you like it that you could steal weapons from dead enemies, and at least if they have the same kit as yours? Um, I don't know about that. Um, I think it would be some kind of scavenging would be good. And stealing kits, I don't know if that would be too metagamey or not, because I mean, if you take it as realism, you're not necessarily going to grab a weapon off of a, a corpse unless you absolutely need it, right? Because you don't know the condition of that, you might not be trained in it. Uh, you know, if you're, you know, using your M4 in the U.S. Army, you might know how to use an AK, but um, you know, it's not your, it's not your bread and butter. Um, I'm speaking as someone who's not been in the service at all, but that's what I've heard. And as far as, yeah, I feel like that could really open up some bad avenues where all of a sudden one squad has three grenade launchers or whatever, if they get lucky. So I think there's, um, maybe room for, I don't know about kit stealing, but I, I do know some, uh, I've seen in some games where like, let's say you pick up a weapon on the ground well that you can get that weapon but that weapon has whatever mag um is in it is just what's in it you get if 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 that uh whoever you killed had you know eight rounds in it that's what you got um so i i think it yeah i'm not saying i actually think it might be if it's executed like that um it could be interesting because it's like a desperation thing definitely yeah. so um yeah you know it has Taking a place i think mags and bandages from down friendlies i can definitely see that um 
but yeah, I mean, that's something we definitely would explore uh, once the capabilities are, are there for us. I'm assuming that's something that could be modded in once the devs release the dev, the, uh, dev kits so we can start playing with things like that. Um, and there's a ton, lots of plans for us as far as how we want to uh, modify our own little version of squad. So. Yeah, and, and I'm so excited uh, for... Um for mod support. I mean, I don't know if you guys, so that there's a, um, the developers of the game on WI put out, um, I think it's monthly, uh, it's called The Wrench, and it's like a mod highlight uh, post uh, on their forums. And actually one of Squad Ops' own uh, best pony uh, is he's creating um, a map that's a lot similar to like uh, Holland Market Garden in World War II with lots of hedgerows and stuff. And, and previously, um, another uh, person for Squad Ops, uh, Ben Bot, I don't know if you've seen him around, he was working on um, some different mortar things. Um, and um, I am so excited to see what our mod teams can come up with um, and bring into the ops, because it's going to be, I mean, as far as I know, pretty much endless. Um, and it should be a lot of fun. It should make these events a lot crazier also. <laughs> And a lot smoother too. Um, automated like spectator modes that are good, and uh, automatically when you die, there's no giving up. There's no it automatically mutes your audio and things like that. Just making taking a lot of the like potential user error out of the situation. That'll make things smoother. If your admins will be around, needed to be around to uh, help corral everyone who's new, because I know. Yeah. It's, it's definitely hard to stop from when you get taken out being like, ah, oh, damn it. And you're not even supposed to say that, you know? Yeah. How do you know if no one is cheating, like relaying to squads where the enemy team is from spectating? The truth is, man, uh, we don't know. Um, and it's part of kind of what makes this an awesome community is it, it's an honor system thing. And, you know, this isn't, a com this isn't meant to be competitive. It's meant to be immersive and it's meant to be exciting. Um, so... I, I completely would, you know, I, I trust that everyone is here for the same reason, um, which is to, to have those things, um, you know, happen. Um, so, yeah, it's mostly on um, the community to be into kind of what we're about. Uh, and, yeah, so there's not really a way to prevent that, but um, it's having admin cam when you die makes it so much more exciting that it's to totally worth um, the you know small overhead like that that's yeah sometimes the best stuff comes when you're dead and you can figure out oh my god i was six feet from that guy and oh you figure out who shot you and where what's going on all that stuff uh, and then you can fly around and get exactly the angles you want uh that's kind of a key part um and that's yeah i don't know how you'd uh, control for that and then as far as the stream sniping or whatever like i guess we could put it on a small delay but um I think we're just hoping that people are mature enough to realize that this isn't about winning and losing. It's about those moments that happen all the time and they happen whether you win or lose, you know, whether your side wins or loses, like very rarely is someone just like, man, that event sucked. We got smashed and it just sucked. Like that just doesn't happen. People are like, man, we got destroyed. It was awesome. There were mortars going off everywhere. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it's never, it's never a negative experience. I mean, maybe Definitely. if you were really unlucky and you, you took the first round in the eye and you didn't see where it came from both rounds, which I'm sure has happened. But even then, it's like, you know, your your heart's pumping when you're walking in there. All of a sudden, the adrenaline's going. And, and, and yeah, it's... it's All right, we're, we're back in. People are getting in their squads. Uh, we're still... I think they're still figuring out it's exactly... Still, still some setup time, but uh, yeah. it's getting closer. Getting closer here. Yeah, so just bear with us with a couple more minutes. I'm going to keep answering questions, though. Um, oh, so... Pringles with another question. Uh, is silencers for some guns something you'd like to see in the game? Um, potentially, we could definitely come up with some scenarios for that. Um, and it, not everything, it doesn't always have to be symmetrical warfare. Um, so you could have like a smaller team with silencers uh, versus bigger. I mean, like all kinds of scenarios that you can come up with. So I think it'd be hard to implement properly, but um, you know, everything in moderation can be can be great. Is my definitely. Opinion, at least. 
don't Definitely. think we've ever brought up silencers as a as a potential tool in any of our meetings, but yeah. And the the reason I mean the reason being it's the same reason we don't do optics. You know, it's fun for the person with a silencer or for with an optic, but if you're just getting randomly gunned down, it may not be as fun. That said, um, as mods come out and you can get more creative with maps, with team sizes and all that stuff, um, you know, I definitely think there could be some ops where maybe like it's a it's a large force defending and a small one attacking, and that's how that's how you even out the, the, the teams or something. You know what I mean? Definitely would not rule it out. Um, one super salty. So as new boots to the game, what are some helpful tips? Tedish. I mean, what do you think? I mean, helpful tips, I would say, if you're new to the game, would be um, just tell your squad leader, I, hey, man, I'm new to the game, <laughs> um, and I'm still you know, picking stuff up. And if you're in a good server, you'll know because they'll say, hey, all right, awesome, welcome to squad, um, and they'll start walking you through some stuff. Um, so, so one tip that I have for, because the one complaint that a lot of new squad players have is, oh, my God. I just keep getting shot and I don't even see them. They're three miles away. Like, what the fuck? And uh, you can get away with this in games where generally things are closer and it's spotting the enemy. And you have to realize that the human eye works great at spotting motion. But in order to spot motion, you have to not be moving, right? So a lot of people are constantly on the move. And then all of a sudden, someone will pick them out from, you know, 500 600 800 meters away and uh you're not gonna have a chance if you're in an open field and all of a sudden you start taking fire you're not gonna know where the heck that's coming from so it's really important when you're looking for your targets is that you're not moving and you're not even moving your mouse i remember someone was watching me play or recording and they were watching the screen they're like oh my god did you go afk or something like suddenly you just stopped moving it's like no i picked where i wanted to look and i just froze and you just look for that one or two pixels that are moving and then you you know focus on that area and that's how you spot people in this game and this that's a tip for newbies and and a lot of like more advanced more experienced players i think can use that a lot more is that you move a little bit you dash from cover to cover freeze sit there look don't move your mouse five ten seconds okay dash to the next cover freeze sit there and look it's amazing sometimes what you'll spot that you totally would have missed if you were just walking blindly through the forest that's so a good point that's, that's my biggest tip yeah target acquisition is really tough it's the hardest it's one of the hardest things about this game uh lav tech uh, what about changing the down but not dead to how it is in rainbow six siege you could crawl to a safe spot people could uh finish you uh too so meaning they could shoot you while you're down um I, I don't dislike that idea, but one thing I'll say is that they've confirmed that um, dragging downed players is in the game. And I think that's more interesting. I think crawling around is um, is an option, but I think having someone have to risk their own one life to come to get come you is get you. way oh. cooler. <laughs> like that's that could, so you could awesome. have such great scenarios developed with that, like little moments yeah. all over the place. Yeah, so I, I won't say I won't say no, but I will say when dragging is in this game, I think that's going to be the way to go. That and maybe a more complicated medical system, like you get shot in the head, you're 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 out. There's no reviving you, but you know you take a, a leg shot or or maybe a body shot or whatever that it knocks you out. Um, maybe then you can get revived. And as morbid as it is, um, if they're in that down state but not out, uh, shooting shooting the casualties um personally i think that should be in the game i think it's mature enough that people playing this game can handle that and not get uh, over the top i yeah. mean it's it's in pubg battle, battlegrounds and that's there's plenty of craziness that goes on there right yeah so Sounds like the question was, it, will real life military training help with squad? And the answer is, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. And it'll, it'll definitely help in our ops because I, I think, um, I, I don't think it's obviously not a requirement. I, I'm not um, a veteran um, and there's plenty of people here who are and who aren't, who are active, uh, active duty. It, it helps leadership especially um, because when your squad leader goes down and your fire team lead and you're taking over um, 
you know, to be dis- even if you're making maybe not the most tactically sound decision, as long as you're authoritative, um, and, you know, I think you're going to be a huge help to your team. And I think um, having real world experience s- seriously um, is a is a boon um, to have uh, in this game. I I think it'll definitely help in our operations, but you've got to realize that if 99% of the population that are playing this game don't have it and you're expecting them to have that experience, then they're going to do stupid things and you're going to get mad at them for doing stupid things. So maybe the tactics of clearing buildings and stuff on a more individual basis, yeah, that's going to help um, in vanilla. But I wouldn't put anything past that in vanilla. But in, in squad ops, yeah, I'd say it's, it's definitely going to help. Yeah, and it's important to note that, I mean... If you don't have real world uh, training, I mean, that's why we have the SOTT basic and the advanced weapons and stuff, which, I mean, if you have real world training, you'll know like general formations, like files, columns and all that stuff. But if you, if you don't, you may not know. And that's why we have everyone go through that training course. It's not to like prove yourself. It's to get everyone on that same baseline, the same base page. So when your squad leader says, all right, I want a stagger column, uh, battle spacing you just boom you just know what that is and obviously real military experience will help you with that but a lot of most people uh, who play this game you know don't have that yeah that's one thing that, yeah I don't know if we talked about the SOTT or AWS before when I was uh, having computer issues but um, a lot of people will find that as kind of very basic stuff you know they've had all their training in real life but they've played a ton of video games and they're already versed in that and they're going to complain that oh my god like do i really need that stuff to get into this and you got to realize it's it's yeah we already mentioned it getting everybody on the same page but also i see it as, as kind of a dedication thing you need a certain amount of maturity to play this game and not potentially like ruin it for everyone you can just imagine what would happen if one person got in here and we were like yeah cool you can do it you haven't been vetted or anything and all of a sudden they turn around in the middle of an op and intentionally tk a bunch of people you know because for the lulls it's the internet and it's just like we really we've never had any of that happen and i think that's because it's i'm not gonna say a barrier to entry but it's we're forcing people to show that they're dedicated enough to play the game the way that everyone wants people to play the game in this situation so i think that's what the SOTT so basic training Tommy and then the AWS and the vehicle training beyond that are really part of. I, th- I think agree. that's the major function, personally. Yep, I agree. Uh, one super salty says leg and arm shot should severely hinder the player. Body shots KO and head does just die. I actually think that's going to happen, man. You're calling them uh, pretty perfectly. I think the way um, that, that OWI is discussed... Uh, damage models to be is that each part of the body will have its own individual one. So hitting it in the arm will may increase a certain amount of weapon sway in a, in a direction. Legs might slow you down or a limp or something like that. Um, so I think that that was the initial plan at least uh, for the way the damage models are supposed to be. Obviously the game isn't out yet, um, but um, I think that's an awesome idea. Well, it is out. Oh, yeah. Yep, it is an alpha. You are correct. Once you get your, looks like we're finally about to do a team briefing here, at least on the Russian side. So hopefully a couple minutes away from from live, round two. Yeah, and uh, I want to point out a couple people, you know, in the chat are saying, "Oh, I'm interested in squad, but I'm I'm waiting to buy it or whatever." You know, I mean, we are giving a squad ops um, is giving away a squad key every month. And if you head to there's links being posted in the, in Twitch chat and YouTube chat, but also on our discord, there's a link to it. Um, if you go on, want to go and enter, um, you know, that's a great way to you know, get at the game of squad um, without uh, me up fronting um, your 40 bucks. Is it 40 bucks? Like I can't remember about it so long ago. It was before, and I'm pretty sure it still is from the last time I've checked the Steam store. And who knows? They might give uh, out some more skins for you know alpha buyers at this point. Well, there was like the founder skin was the original set with like the M4, and I think I think was it just the M4 that gets a. Uh, and then then they give the RPG and the Law have a have a skin for the veterans. Yeah. And who knows? They might give another one out, so it might be worth buying it. But. Uh, yeah, so we're going to hop on board with uh, Shadow Ritual as he gives a brief. 
to his team for the second round. Wall well, risk it over here. So guys, come on over here. Yeah, let's go over the whole team brief by the PPR. We all good? Everybody here? Last sheep. All right, cool. All right, guys, welcome to welcome to Operation Crazy Horse round um, question mark. Cause I'm not sure if this is round two or redoing. Yeah, 1.5. Yeah. So if you were already on Russian side last time, sorry, we're gonna be on Russian side again. It's cool. We're just gonna stomp them even harder. We were within like five five people. We would have won, I think. But that's for another time. <laughs> Uh, the plan is as follows. Squad 1 is going to have the BTR, except isn't driving. Squad 2 is going to be infantry with the transport. Squad 3 is going to have the MTLB, and Squad 4 will be in the transport. We're going to take uh, our two bridge crossings. They're going to be here, MTLB and uh, no, sorry, yes. BTR and transport are going to cross at this bridge. MTLB is going to take the high ground here and try and get Overwatch on the uh, south part of the hill. This is... Uh, we had an, an insanely easy time crossing the center bridge, so we're just going to uh, try and use that again. We're going to cross, and we're going to try and get eyes on this hill and Radio Tower Hill. From Radio Tower Hill and that hill, we will basically be able to see excuse me, the entire north part of the map, north and east and west part of the map. Like we're going to have, basically, we're going to be able to see what we need to see from there. From there, we're going to move to encircle the enemy. Uh, we're going to try and cut off their supplies and just get and just completely surround them. The problem we had last time is we were moving in from the west and the south when we had no north support. So we're going to try and time these time these flanks a little bit better and try and get all sides squeezing in at the same time so that way the enemy can't focus on one, one of our sides. Uh, vehicles, we're going to be staying as far away as possible, doing long-range support. I don't want them getting taken out by an easy uh, lad shot and uh, just getting plinked away by the uh, striker. Are there any questions? Cool. If there are no further questions, squad leads, break them out. Final details, I will call for live. Uh, what and which vehicles again? Uh, one BTR, two and four in That's transport, right. three in MTLB. Yeah, XF, don't drive. Don't worry, I'll drive. <laughs> hop out of the trans. Whoever's driving, hop out oh, of the trans, please. Seat, guys. Driving. All right, so what you guys just listened to was Russia briefing. Um, so um, with the weird hiccup thing, um, we're actually moving. This is round two. Technically, this is round two. We'll call it Muffset. We'll call it 1.5. Yeah, for sure. 1.5. Um, but the teams are going to be the same. Um, I'm going to open up my map. and <laughs> So uh, the FOB location is about as different as it could possibly be. Oh, um, yeah. So on. the first round, if you remember, uh, um, the U.S. defense was in Jazara, and now it's all the way st pretty much straight north uh, of Russia, mate. Uh, and it's important to note um, that uh, obvious there's no infantry restrictions. Sometimes there's infantry restrictions on our ops, as in where they can go. Um, Generally, the smaller ones. Yep. Yeah, so they can't cross water. Well, in this one, infantry have no restrictions. Vehicles must cross bridges. So there's two main bridges here, and it's going to be interesting if the BTR heads up uh, to the north bridge right next to the fob. We'll see if they spot it out in time. Um, but that's a pretty typical bridge to take with the BTR. Um, so I'm actually curious to see how that's going to go. So yeah, the U.S., this is far from their main, like very far, and not exactly a straight road. So Lodgy runs are going to be exposed and few and far between. So I would expect maybe one Lodgy run to successfully make it back. So we're not going to see an endless stream of mortars. Looks like uh, the U.S. are just about, they're done briefing. Yeah, before they get into into the nitty-gritty of it all, I want to go over kind of the uh, the over uh, overviews for the op. Um, so to start things off with, um, the U.S. assets are going to be uh, two ARs, one grenade launcher, one light anti-tank, and one medic per squad. 
And they're also going to get the, the striker, the two Logitrucks, trucks, two mortars, and two HMG emplacements. Russia, who's attacking, is going to get two automatic rifles, two light anti-tanks, one medic, as well as one BTR, one MTLB, and one transport truck as their heavy assets. Flipping over to the operation overview, the U.S. forces have set up a fob and mortar emplacement somewhere northeast of the Kohat River. We now know it's straight north of Russia, Maine. Russian forces have been tasked with destroying the U.S. FOB and eliminating all U.S. forces. The important thing here is U.S. have a logistics convoy moving supplies that must be accompanied by a striker. So like Tedish said, um, U.S. actually does get a logistical truck to run supplies from, from Maine uh, and back to the FOB. Um, and that's super far right now compared to where they were, and it's a lot harder to get to. Just know that the map that's on the screen is uh, not the right map. We'll, we'll fix that in the future, but uh, yeah. Hey, Ren, Jack, did you hear me? Uh, yes, yeah. No, so um, if you're tuning in, um, the last round was... Uh, uh, the fight was at all at Jazara, which is, if you can see on my map, there's a road right here that's running really easy Lodgy runs to the U.S. main, right down to Jazara, back to Maine. Um, this one, there's another road, but it's really far and it's very windy. It comes all the way down here, sweeps up north. So the Lodgy is going to be a lot uh, harder to come by. And those mortars that we saw that were so effective in round one are going to be a little more limited on ammo since the Lodgy runs do supply the mortar ammo. 30 ammo per round that that runs out real quick so yeah yeah it is, so considering they flip their striker so early in um, round one it's an interesting choice to do the the long road yeah maybe they'll, uh, they're thinking it's going to go a little bit better we'll although i will say uh although i will say as we said the striker has to be accompanying the lodgy and so when the striker went down the lodgy actually couldn't make any more runs so they made it work anyway even without the logic support, um, so which is you know good, uh, admirable. Um, they're gonna have to do a similar thing as we go live. And we're live. The U.S. isn't moving. <laughs> says, oh, I, guess can challenge. I take it the Russians are moving, yeah. Do, yeah, the Russians are they're yeah. hustling. Yeah, Don't knee jerk pull back because. I don't. Yeah, like I don't think the U.S. got the. Think of the memo. Although well, we'll see them out. We're going, I might we're going. broadcast here. Okay, where are we at? We see, we see right, the convoy for Russia rolling up again. Uh, I've been reminding. There we go. <laughs> I've been. Uh, Reminding uh, you guys about this, but the the vehicles must use bridges, but the infantry do not need to. So I want to highlight uh, a couple of the vehicles that we're going to be seeing um, that you're taking a look at right now. Uh, the one, the first one you're looking at right here is the uh, BTR. Uh, the the BTR-80 um, is a 13-person uh, um, APC. It's got good speed. It's got good offense. It's got good defense. Um, it's a qual. It's just quality. It's got good range. Got a nice optic. Um, it's probably the centerpiece of most of, not just in this op, but anytime Russia gets a BTR, it's probably the centerpiece of the offense. Um, and it's it's going to do uh, wonders uh, against that striker. It's kind of the main thing that's going to end up fighting that striker. The, the other vehicle, uh, which I want to highlight, uh, the other like heavy asset, I guess, that uh, the Russians get is the one I'm looking at right now which is the MTLB. Uh, the MTLB uh, is a bit slower than the BTR. Uh, it has a much higher infantry carrying capacity of 19. Um, and it, its offense is a little worse. It doesn't. It's not rolling with the full set that the BTR has got. It's got, um, I think is that's a Dishka machine gun on the top of it, but uh, it has some range with the optic on it. Uh, but the main thing this thing is good for is carrying 19 um, other infantry yeah. half uh, of the damn team yep yeah I, and and especially on this map the movement is so key because the map is so large uh that yeah. you know being able to move that many um being able to move that many people at once is super valuable 
It can be a, a liability. I load neither of people in there and uh, you get it blown up. Ouch. We've had something close to that happen before. Yeah, and, and the thing you're looking at right now on Tedit's screen is actually the counterpart to the BTR, which is the first thing we highlighted, which is the uh, American Striker. Uh, same, similar stats uh, to the BTR. It's quick. It's got a lot of offense. It's got a lot of defense. It's holding two less infantry, but again, more than a full squad. Um, you can put a full squad plus a driver gunner and a striker. Um, and the thing I want to highlight about this op is that the striker and the BTR both have good optics, and they'll probably duel at range. It's a lot about positioning, where's the striker, spotting that out, getting the BTR to get eyes on it, and vice versa. And whoever can launch the first most accurate shot is probably going to win that engagement. Yep. Uh, assuming I haven't heard any chatter about the Russians spotting the convoy, so it looks like All they right. made it to base for the first time. So they're on the west, they're on the northwest they will. side now, near Chikar. Oh, maybe shout out side. How are we going to play this? Um, no, you're going to cross the bridge near Jazar, and you're going to try and uh, cut off yeah, their so uh, supplies from there. Start trying to get your guys he's calling it out. If you don't yeah, he's calling him out that he's trying to send his MTLB over across the bridge to Gazara to cut their supplies probably once the second, once the second run gets the back, if they now, run it. Uh, in some we'll That's what it sounds there. like. Uh, chances are infant That's a good way to find the base is just watch the uh, Lodgy runs and be like, oh, yeah. hey, they turned around right there. There must be a base. Totally. So uh, something important to remember is as the game of squad changes, we, we update this op. And this op actually used to be, there used to be some squares that were on your map. And that, those were the different keypads that you could, uh, you could place your fob in. And they were usually around the center by Jazara and one up here. That's not really the case anymore. The restriction, as you saw in that overlay we put up, was simply to be east of the fob has to be east of this river. So anything on this northeastern part of the map is fair game. So it's a lot harder to track. It's a lot harder to track that fob down. So following that convoy of supplies is actually super valuable, um, even more valuable than I think it was previously. Convoy is picked up with supplies. Coming back. And I've realized that the U.S. probably did see that live call. They were waiting to spend their supplies uh, before they here. dropped both lodges. Get your guys and loaded left. up and start trying to cross this bridge. <laughs> so I'm, to yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's what happened there. <laughs> they got called that nonetheless. Shadow spotting the convoy. So yeah, they're definitely knowing. They definitely know where the convoy is. They're doing such a good job of being patient here. And no one's flipped over yet. That's good. <laughs> yeah, so that's important. Is the first round, the striker actually flipped. And that seems unlucky, but that's also part of the skill um, that you can bring to these ops. Is if you're a confident driver, um, I mean, that's all the better. Because this is a lot of these maps are real tough uh, on uh, people driving. Uh, lots of stuff can flip you, uh, hard to navigate. So being a good driver is invaluable. Let's hear it for Edgy, Dermaplast, and Sightless so far for having a flawless driving record. And here's something <laughs> I just noticed. It looks like the U.S. have put four people in the striker rather than just the driver-gunner combo. They put a full fire team in that, which is interesting. Um, I could see it being potentially useful to drop off a, a soldier pair behind enemy lines somewhere, um, or maybe just to help defend the striker, but... I feel like if your striker gets ambushed, you're following the probably road just sacrificing west. those two guys because it's going to be a massive ambush squad versus whatever's in that striker. Yeah, I, I'm actually a huge fan of, of playing some people off of the main fob. Uh, I think it, the counterattacks that you can launch is are super important. So I think even just having a fire team off the point is uh, invaluable, uh, both for the scouting that they can get done and also just on predictability that they bring to the team. So I'm seeing uh, the BTR crossing the bridge just west of Malak. So look, okay, they're definitely gonna start to Definitely cutting off the uh, the re return supply run. Stopping here. Uh, infantry is out. Gonna move northwest. 
one squad dismounting from the BCR. Like we said, it's got 13 infantry carrying capacity, so more than a full squad can fit in there. And the trans truck is dropping the rest of the um, Russian force down here. Oh, it looks like someone's taking shots here. Wow, these shots are coming in from the striker. So, I mean, that's oh, it's not the striker. Placement. Yep. That's an that's HMG bunker. I mean, that's how far is that? I mean, that's that is far. Let me, I'll, I'll let me do the math here. Ah, they saw the transport truck. That's what they're firing at. Ah, I wonder if they saw them dismount. No that distance. But you can just, just see that truck. That is probably a eight to nine hundred meter shot that that thing is taking. Yeah. I actually thought that was a striker just just based on the range. I thought it was a striker, but no. Behind it. Look at those tracers going off. Yeah, here they go. This is this is scarily accurate. Although the BTRs got better optics. BTRs returning fire now. Yep. Yeah, and that is a dangerous game that Ooh, these HMG yep. bunkers are playing. Oh, those shots are scarily yeah, I close. Love, I love the dirt. Oh, look at all those infantry just piling up on that plateau. <laughs> Man, so it's important to note that. Obviously, just like oh, as these HMG shots are so close to getting kills, that you can't repair vehicles in our ops unless it's specified by the um, by the event. So any damage that's done to the BTR is per is permanent. It's permanent. Um, so it's even if you're just getting a skip, uh, one two bullets here and there, it's going to be hugely helpful uh, when it comes down to uh, mortar fire and lack hit usage. This saw gunner just spraying down those trees. Ooh, the mortars are landing in there now too. Oh. Those were good. The, the, who is okay, Tedish? Do we should figure out who's operating these mortars because who's they are, the mortars? They are, are on so that? on point. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm tracking this BTR, but those mortars are so good. Man, they're, they've been on point for two rounds. So it looks like we got Pure Paradise and Smith. Awesome. And obviously, their squad leader is walking them in, probably. What? Yeah, I should correct that. Smith is the one on the mortar proper. It's oh. Sure is sitting right next to him with binoculars. Like, I don't know what he's looking at because he's in a fully walled compound with those binoculars, but I'm sure he's got his map open. He's calling yeah. things out. Awesome. Really good job by them. Forcing that BTR to move. Forcing those troops uh, to be display uh, displaced. Uh, Krusty did say BTR was at 90% health, so it's taken a couple hits here and there. It took a few hits. It's probably half dozen hits. And so it looks like squad... Three on the Russia is uh, sizing up to try to ambush those uh, that supply combo that is not coming. They have wisely chosen to not try to get two runs in because I think they realize at this point the game's up. They know what's up. Both sides know what's up with the lodges, so no one's going to try. Yeah, and yeah, I guess they they probably thought uh, you know that's good enough. Did they actually drop the Lodgy, though? Did they drop the Lodgy, uh, or did they just run it back and then it's sitting there? Oh, I haven't. I'm not close enough to check. Because I wonder if they're thinking about, oh, we want to use Lodgy for build points rather than, oh, we want to use it for mortar ammo, right? Because you can only top out at so much ammo. You can't just infinitely get ammo. So if the mortars hadn't used anything... Um, I see both of the Lodgies are still full. So yeah. they've got 1,000 rounds, 1,000 ammo points ready to go. Yeah, so it's kind of what I wondered was well, that it, sound, it looks like the fact that they're both full them. means that they really want to use them for that mortar and HMG ammo we need a, we need a um, at the same time. instead of maybe super fobbing, which is, uh, I think, a good idea. As we saw, the mortars last round were BTR very effective. Is in the valley. Yeah. Stand by for e Tracking along with this BTR. East. Heading back north, northwest, kind of back right, the way it five, came five, initially. I'm curious to see if it engages with that striker at range. Um, it's laying low right now, um, yeah, but uh, sooner than later, probably when it comes to this bend on the road, um, it'll probably get some good views on at least the fob, but there's also a, a, a squad that's pushing kind of towards it. 
Quarters are um, in the valley, about straight north from it. Impact, 20 seconds. They may be E421, they may be a little further. And it's also important to note that there's about a fire team in, or so in this BTR, so they can all, they will also dismount here pretty soon. I've got Command here who spotted out the American uh, Striker. He's, he's guiding in the BTR. It's trying to move north. It's dismounted yeah, one scout. Yeah, he says he's scout. dismounted one scout. Yeah, so they, they know exactly what's up there. Copy, confirm, last bridge for striker. It's, it's right north of command. Makes me wonder if they've spotted the BTR out. Yeah, that's accurate. I think, north, I mean, they saw the BTR earlier when hill. it came under the machine gun fire. It's yeah, but it's been gone for so long. It could be literally anywhere. Where is it at this point? So uh, I'm tracking along with it by Sara's eye, uh, north of the main uh, base. In fact, it's actually okay. going to roll around yeah. to high ground, which is good. And it's, it, there's a squad directly to its west, or east, excuse me. But it's got a, some chance yeah, of seeing here. Get, squad three is just north of it. That's north that they're gonna. Or BTR or sorry. Right, I feel like we're gonna we're, go keep, we're gonna keep going north. Follow this death lane uh, until command tells us to stop. I'll let you know. so we're squad is dismounting from this BTR again by Sara's eyes straight north that of Russian six, main. Um, the squad three SL, uh, which is Kirkley, he's he's probably here in the BTR. Obviously, he can't hear the command comms, but uh, my guess is he's here in that. Krusty actually spots out. Um, I believe he's spotting this this enemy uh, this enemy squad here, and the BTR is a perfect tool to take them up from range. Oh, they quirkly has got to know where this BTR is. He's, he's got it, right? Friendly. Yeah, I mean, he definitely sees it. Oh, yeah. He's got his binos out up there. Yeah, he's... They're gonna, this there's is, gonna mortars coming down. How do these guys not look up there? Oh, just crusty. Oh, boy. He's, like, and silhouetted. This and is like trigger discipline. This is trigger discipline right here. Kirkley's definitely wants... He probably wants to shoot Krusty right in the head, but he, it's such a bad idea. <laughs> He knows who the commander is, or who the squad leader is over there. Do it, Quirk. <laughs> Quirk is just watching this carnage happen, although he's getting a lot of good info. Oh, the mortars! Oh, the mortars. Wow. They damaged, um... Uh, Piddle, I think, took some damage, as well as the yeah the BTR, <laughs> definitely took some splash from that. Quirkly, I'm sure Quirkly called that position oh, out, and then it got dropped. Oh, right on top of the, right next to the BTR. This is why it's so imp important to not always fire at everything, especially when you're squad leading. Um, it's one of the hardest things to do, uh, but I mean the info you gather is so valuable. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, Man, you hear Shadow just, just calling all these, all these commands in. Copy that. He's getting them to, he's hustling them along. He's, yeah, he's calling out that BTR. He's telling those guys plateau, to flank. Just south. What is burning over there? That's the MTLB smokestack. Uh, Muffin, the other light. I think it's uh, the, the FX one. They're calling out the, the striker. Plateau, stop! Oh man, he's just sitting on that hill. Yeah, they have the whole perfect team eyes. This yeah. is brutal. Put, tell Muffin he's in charge of these lads. Boy. Command. And they, they, I don't mean, they haven't, they don't think they've seen anything. I think Russian might be going to check over the plateau, which is a good move. I can only imagine what he's going to find. Uh, once he goes over, he's probably going to freak out because he is about to come up on the entire, other than one fire, he's about to come up on the entire Russian force wrapping around this hill. Watch him get like four kills. 
Because I don't think anyone's looking right up the hill. Oh boy. <laughs> He's crusting right now. Here we go. He sees him. Here he goes. Oh my yeah, god. Like, oh, oh, he got he spotted as well. Oh, he got spotted as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. This... Shots fired. So he saw a, a few people, but they definitely didn't see the majority of them, which are already across this open field. As Nasty Nate is also up here. Oh, bolt! Oh, there's some shots. There we go. Nate takes one. Nate, yep. Nate got took a bullet. Bolt in the ass. Well, I would pay to be able to hear these com command comms. I'm just curious as to who they think is over there. Maybe they think it's the same fire team that um, Russian saw, but that is. Let's just say it's not quite accurate. Oh, oh! The striker is uh, still looking kind of the wrong way. What direction is that MTLB? I thought I saw, saw it smoke north. And Terry, apparently contacts are direct south of you. Ooh, yeah, so really good play down. here to not crest over that hill, because he's d a dead man if he did that. Yeah, he's about to crest, though. They, they is he cresting? The he's cresting. He's... Oh. Sneaky. The sneaky look right. Sneaky. <laughs> 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 Oh, now, now he looks oh, right as soon as he goes down. This is not good for Russian. Oh, boy. <laughs> you can see the entire you can see the entire fire team up here. Just turn all their heads right to him. Taking fire from that 50 cal. Yeah, and the MTLB, the MTLB actually got tagged up. It's actually on fire, too. So Here we go. Muff with the lats are coming up on the striker. Ooh, one goes right over the top! FX-1000. There's one hit on the striker. Yellow health on fire. Next shot coming out right up the end. Third shot, three hits. Fourth oh, shot missing. Fifth hey, shot hits. there it is. But uh, MTZ is still actually alive. He actually yeah, bailed out of that thing at the last running. second. He's forced gumped in that shit. <laughs> that was that defensive nope, stat that we showed earlier. He's, he's, he's turning it. Nah, he's just running. He's running at us. He's got the cover of his of his team here. Yeah. Chad up making a good point, which is strikers down relieves a lot of pressure, which it definitely does. It definitely frees up a lot of movement. It's really good use of the double lats um, in the Russian squads. They get uh, two light anti tank kits. Right there. Probably, but I'm just saying. I counted the, five go the, out. The, so the concentration of, like, uh, of lat kits that the Russians get really makes that. Uh, if they get close, I mean, <laughs> if they get close, you're, you're done for. He's te this Teasy, M Teasy. Just hiding in Defilade, waiting for someone to come over that hill. He's a GL. So, so we saw Russian see them and the tracker go down. And we have this entire at least one one and a half squads pushing on the northern part of the map. Uh, and I don't know that the Americans know that they're over here. I think they were so focused on the striker and so focused on Russian uh, that they may have no idea that this is coming in. And there's no one south either. Like, the U.S. are totally blind to this hill until, I mean, I'm going to fly up here. But once they get up here, I mean, they're looking down on this entire U.S. squad um, and right onto the FOB as well. So we'll see how this executes. Of course, Teezy is about to get shot in the bum. <laughs> he sure he Tommy lived Tommy long, him. though. No, he's still good. Wow, I could have sworn Tommy stood up, saw him, and they did this hilarious, like, where they both turned at exactly the right time so that Teezy didn't know that he got spotted. But Tommy didn't take advantage of it. So three more mortars just went out. Kind of curious as to so how this might affect the uh, BTR. Not sure exactly the the angle that those were going at. Now nah, they're going over to the east. BTR is pretty much unmolested on top of the hill. 
Especially now with the striker down, it's not a lot for it to worry about as long as it stays at range. Some 50 yeah, cals taking shots at it. Yeah, I think the uh, BTR just got spotted with that red smoke. Yeah, it got uh, it got tagged up a little bit. Uh, 50 cal hit it a couple times. It's at 80% uh, health probably. Yeah, that squad that's going way up on the hill. That is a bold move. I mean, it's bold, but it's so good. It's so good. Especially because, I mean, the Americans obviously have no clue what's going on. But they'd be reacting to this right now. This is so, this is so good from uh, Russia. This is Jack Reynolds' squad, so he's he's oh, doing. Now they're they're shooting, they're firing Ooh. down on that squad. They do have a really good position up there. Yeah, that might not have been the greatest idea. I feel like you probably should have got everyone online before you start unloading like that. But yeah. the positioning is good enough that it may not matter. Oh, when Jack takes one in the in the shin. Again, no optics, so this is all irons. Uh, yeah, this is all irons guys. from Russia. Ooh, Ooh, the GL is the GL. That is a great weapon against. They've got a backboard behind them to corral those shots. Yeah. Good GL. Now you start walking them in. Mortar's out. And then on the other side, yeah, we'll smoke between your positions. That's good. Keep we've got this fire team that, embedded in the little yeah, compound that, here. Yeah. Up against the BTR and another fire team. Yeah, that's on you. Supported with some mortars. Man, <laughs> this Boogie this flank up north is. Now. I actually have <laughs> never seen this before. I've never seen them get this high and this far up. Even in pub games, you don't see people up there. No, very often. <laughs> no, not at all. And I'm actually surprised that. Uh, uh, let's see who's in who's in charge. Jack is still up here. I'm surprised he's taking them this high because there's there's not a lot you're actually gonna there's hit. Not a lot of cover. And you you're not gonna hit much. Real quick. Yeah. So and you're GL'd. I mean, I, yeah. At best, this is a good suppression position, Before, but you're not gonna hit much. I don't think. Good distraction if anyone else takes advantage of it. Definitely. If they execute on that, um, definitely affected distraction. There we go. The BTR found him up there. That's that's bad news. Why is the BTR shoot? So the fifties. Oh boy. The BTR is firing on the guys on the hill. This is um really bad. So here's some yeah, funny fire. fire so the HMGs are firing up. The BTR. You said the BTR is shooting at them. The BTR. I was like, Fulcrum. Is that Fulcrum? <laughs> Fulcrum or Ray T? I can't tell who's gunning, who's driving. Was definitely firing on friendlies. <laughs> that was maybe that's it. Yeah, that was a little and bit of a whoopsie over. Over Always check your maps, guys. Always check your maps. The HMGs were firing up too. So <laughs> I would say um. I would say they were there a we little go. bit suppressed. BTR finally finds some enemy targets. There you go. Jack's BTR leading them off the spine of this um, this mountain right here, which is good. That squad that was underneath them is white. Ooh, more HMG fire coming up the spine of this mountain. Yeah, we've got infantry uh, where you're Jack ran up it. He's running down it uh, now. Ship fire down to that uh, original building. I gotta say, man, I really thought that the... <laughs> I, I think um, the, the squad up north probably yeah, should, gave their forward. position away a little too early. So they started firing down onto the, the U.S., but they didn't really let their guys push up under that or cause much of a distraction. There's like a fire team coming across the field to the south. But other than that, there's not much. I think they're just up here. Is their compound? We got guys. Muff coming in from the south side, sneaking up in the fields. Let's, I let's think they're low. pretty much unspotted. Who's that? Muff server error and FX1000, the Lat Squad. There's a suppression coming out. Silent death lagging behind them. Let's see if we can get a 
Get a perspective on that from. I think it's, uh, Charlie five, no one's looking nine, at them. They could walk right in right now. Copy, I'll pass. Enemy saw fire here. Oh yeah, we got we got visuals on sandbags. All right, guys, here here's they are. They don't even know we're here. Let's get into this field. Must oh, calling shit, out sandbags. sandbags. I see enemies. Oh yeah, I got visual. Should we shoot our? Uh... Yeah, he's calling out the frags. Out. We're gonna see it. a Let's salvo see of frag rockets coming in here. I see Clear three of them. With... <laughs> four, four frag rocks coming out simultaneously here. This Ooh, is boy. <laughs> it's almost like artillery. It's almost like mortars all on itself. Let's see if we can coordinate this. Three, one. Yeah, I just saw a couple of them into the building there. Come on, Muff, I want to see this. My fire team, we're gonna move up to oh, they're getting their rifles back out. That's too bad. Oh, what was that? Uh, that was the BTR. Just blew up. All right, I see yeah. It. Oh, this is crazy. Yep, not sure know what, what hit down. it, honestly. Yeah, make sure you guys have your back blast clear. Does anybody see any enemies? Let's look, let's look. Bob. Okay, okay. It's probably an HMG. They're calling it Bob. Uh, lats from the FOB, I think. Hmm, Lats. Oh no, it's probably that squad that was over there. Right? There's a whole squad that's off that's playing like like we mentioned that's playing off I don't the uh see um, any of them poking out there with uh, 70 meters to your north side, MTLB. MTLB laying down the law on those guys though as they show themselves. Just going right over the heads. A little cam over there. So the Russians are definitely firmly in control here. They have four casualties versus 16 for the U.S. That's so surprising, man. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's been that heavy, but uh, when you look at it, it's a uh, tightening noose. It seems like the U.S. really didn't react necessarily to it. Um, I'm surprised because the Russians looked good initially, and then it kind of like stagnated. But um, I'm surprised there's not more U.S. or not more Russian casualties, actually. Given how slow it kind of progressed. All right, lats are about in position. Would you like us to aim at sandbags in the building? and doorways? Ah, Shadow's just calling them in. Squeak all sides. Here comes the pinch. Yep, smoke in advance. Yeah. And this is the risk about playing off the point, is if you don't react, I mean, you're just pretty much useless. So, again, don't forget, the ultimate goal of uh, the, this is to kill the FOB radio, which is what uh, is over here. Um, so, if you're off the point, I mean, unless you're, like, turned around and firing from a ridge, you're not really helping to defend that FOB radio. You can always try to retake, but by that time, the FOB will be gone anyway. Got some close Shadow's combat pointing. kills in here. Yeah, I mean, look at this encirclement that the um, the Russians have. I mean, it's all, it's literally 180. Ooh, the uh, frag rocket comes in and gets a double kill. Yeah, Another it's a frag rocket. Sandbags flying oh. everywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, oh that brutal. That was this crazy. is insane. <laughs> really good rocket fire right there. Is that everybody? No, um, there's one or two oh, still shuffling around near the fob, right? Around. Two on the radio itself. Yeah, and and this is the problem: is you're off the point now, and uh, the rest of your team is dying, dead. Uh, and they haven't really returned. They're finally starting to fire, wow, but uh, it's a little uh, too little too late, I think. Oh boy, this is like an episode. This is like zombies, man. One goes down. He's, he's got the saw. He's going fully auto. And he's like, look, look at all those guys. Look at all those I mean, rushes outside. That was so <laughs> good. Watch your spacing here, guys. Wow. I mean, they, they literally Set got off the 360. IED. They got 360 <laughs> around that fob. Full circle around that fob. And all pinched in at the same time. And is, is just that, wrecked it. I mean, there's still everybody? a... There's still a squad alive. Where's 
Crispy's still they're, alive. They're west. They were west across the river. They're starting to. They're realizing what's happening. Oh right, that small squad out outdoors. That, yeah, they didn't react. They actually bolstered. It was actually almost a full squad. MTLB's wrecking them right now. It was almost a full squad, uh, which is a full squad that's not defending the fob actively. Um, and they didn't really react to that. Uh, to that encirclement that the the siege that the Russians laid down. What are they firing at? The whole Russian team is just victory firing here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're memeing on him right now, as it were. Let's see. There is not. There is a. Pick one off. Wound another. Yeah, there's probably six alive, maybe. Six, seven alive. I see four. The U.S. Just basing on the scoreboard right now. There's uh, there's three actually that are south across the fields that aren't with those four that you're looking at right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. They're pretty close. Although, the, you know, the, the Russians are also doing a good job of getting a nice coverage as he, they got spotted right away. Um, they got some nice cover, like 360. They got into the point going 360, and then they immediately whoop, turned right back around and got 360 coverage poking out. So... Good so we should point out that got eyes so on. the objective was completed, right? The Russians Correct. came in down the radio. However, ship fire left. Ship um, fire left. You know, we're not in it for like winning and losing. It's it's the experience. No, so far, like too, the too remaining far, squads are still within close enough range to be in contact yeah, on target, and not on to drag things out. So we're gonna continue right the game, right? Reload. Yeah, it's a good point that you know there is an objective, but that. It doesn't end there. I mean, if, if everyone's still playing, I mean, now the U.S. Now the U.S. should be to retake. Tasked with you know retaking. It's it's really just a way to focus the action rather than determine wins and losses. One thing I will say is the father or anything like that. This U.S. squad that's still alive is a squad. Like they have comms with each other, so that's one oh, really? thing they have going for them. Yeah, I've got. Yeah, I've got a, a fire team over here. Full four. They're working well together, moving through these woods. Yeah, there's about three down here. The river. So. And we both got a fire team. Yep, more or less. Actually, the Russians are pushing off of yeah, the point now. <laughs> and the U.S. are moving back in. <laughs> this is uh, it's a little bit like hide and seek. <laughs> Whew. Where's the U.S.? Yeah, the, so now the, uh, the remaining seven U.S. Are encircling their old base. Good battle spacing here. Someone's asking about <clears throat> numbers. I, I'm not sure about the Russians. A lot, as you can see, there are seven U.S. alive. Seven U.S. alive, um, and a lot of Russians. At least two squads. There's only been six killed. So, yeah. MTLB, do you yeah. Got eyes on? Quite a few. Oh, and here comes here comes the U.S. They're about to the U.S. This uh, Southern Fire Team is about to run into the pretty much a patrolling squad of Russians down here. Oh, they might have just tracers, missed them. Tracers, enemy position on tracers. This one could be ships passing in the night if they don't look down. MTLB currently has one mag. Here comes a spot. U.S. has spotted the Russians. One Russian goes down. One U.S. goes down. Good reactions from the Russians to the ambush here. Good reactions. Getting nice and spread out. Using their numbers. The northern fire team is... Uh, the MTLB is uh, moving in on them. They lost one. Yeah, U.S. are falling down here. And there goes the southern fire team. Dispatched thoroughly by Jack Reynolds and his boys. I think he just bled out. He just did a backflip. He was prone, and then he just suddenly did a backflip. He's just showing off. He's just showing off, man. <laughs> That's some wicked core. Ooh, he gets gunned down. That's <laughs> core strength. The the prone backflip? Yeah, I'd like to see someone do that. So we got one GL versus the world here. Who is this? Is this last man? know where they're at anymore? Torched? I got this. I see red smoke to our north. near John Daly. What is that? We don't have red smoke. I hear him shooting. So is this the last man? I believe this might be the last man. Yeah. Last man. Sure looks like it. Sneaky, can you push to the east? Oh, side the he sees that. Yeah, oh, I'm this is bad. 
That's Torch. it. Fire. Oh boy. Oh, did he just get one? He did. Wow, that guy did some acrobatics. That was great. Torch is the last man, and he's he's the last man in it about as well as he can. Tell me you caught that. <laughs> the grenade going into the valley, and then the body just flips out of it. That was great. <laughs> How far away is that? Ooh, looks like we got a right torch there. muff confrontation here. Position. Oh, I can hear him talking. He's, he's running. Muff's right here. It's gonna be a surprise. Oh, nope. What was that explosion? He can hear Muff. Muff goes down. There he goes. FX goes oh, down. He gets Double two? kill. He's wounded awesome though. Awesome job. Wounded. Oh, he bled oh, out. He bleeds out. No. <laughs> it's a good ending. And then does a backflip. Yeah. <laughs> that's a. That's a fitting. Uh, that's a fitting. <laughs> Gee. Uh, that's a fitting uh, quality end to that one. All right, so um, that's it for this this op. That was round two. We will, if you guys want to stick around, uh, we will be um, grabbing an interview with Expit and Shadow, the two commanders, kind of pick their brain about this op. It's changed over over the course of uh, the life of the map and, and the in squad. So um, if you want to stick around, um, we'll be interviewing them in a sec. Also, if you have any other questions, let us know. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that was round two of Operation Crazy Horse with. A pretty resounding Russian victory, but still fun. Like even still though, fun. yeah, even though it was a, a heavy victory, like I'm sure everyone had a good time. Especially oh, yeah. the, that last guy's so tense. Yeah, when you're the when you're the last man, it's uh, whew. and he did it's, great. Uh, I think he picked up four at the very end. Yeah, and an awesome GL. Yeah, that GL was that was comic. Awesome GL. Um, so we're actually joined by. The men themselves, Shadowed and uh, Expert, guys, welcome. Good games. Welcome. Hello. Well, thank you. Hey. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you guys um, about, um, so you guys are both, like, I've been around for a while, um, and I think you guys have probably both played this up before, um, but it's been changed a little bit. Um, why don't uh, each of you kind of go over, you know, what, what you like about what's been changed and kind of how it affects maybe the strategy um, of this op? Um, I think my favorite change of it is originally it used to have like six, six or seven like different locations that you could choose from. And, and the, the change that was made is just, it's literally anything north and east of the river. Like that just increases the amount of replayability of this op because there's just just so many different areas you can you can put your fob down there's so many different hilltops you can, you can put your emplacements on like just there's just it just adds a lot of variety to the op and it just keeps it fresh and interesting i think for me the vehicle change is the biggest one that uh, russia used to run with what just one btr and the u.s had two humvees open top and the, and the change to the striker by you know giving russia two vehicles and now us one it kind of flip-flops the the dynamic a little bit yeah, definitely. Um, Striker versus Humvees, yeah, it's a, yeah. a big change. Yeah, totally. Um, so I guess one key, like I I've commanded this op in the past, different versions of it, but one of the keys to this op um, is the vehicle placement um, and vehicle use. So I wanted to kind of go to Shadow and then Exbit about like, what do you think about when you're kind of commanding vehicles? Do you micromanage? Do you leave it up to the squad lead? Like, especially on Kohat with so many hills, like, what are you kind of looking for in vehicle placement? Um, really, whenever I do vehicle placement, I'm, I am I just tell them I need this vehicle on the west and this vehicle on the east. And then the fine positioning, I'll leave up to the SO. Because a lot of times, like, in your mind, you sort of want them in an exact position, but you, you really don't know what's going on if you're not exactly with them. And so, like the the finer placement of like what's going to keep them best concealed, what's going to keep them best hidden from uh, from like MG fire is is I just I like to leave that up to the up to the uh, squad leads. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of the same way. I kind of let my squad leads run their show because they're they're the ones out in the field. They got the eyes on what's going on. And vehicles are one of those assets that are really hard to manage and try to micromanage them them from like you know a one thousand foot level is kind of hard to. But if there is a particular like um, 
situation which I definitely can need to use this vehicle for something, I'm going to tell them, you know, don't commit it, stay here, you stay there until I tell you to release it. But uh, other than that, just kind of like free range. Like, you know, the first round we saw, we, you know, we flipped the striker in the second round and it got destroyed because it pushed way too far to the east. So it didn't have any support out there. It was just a low duck getting shot up. We Yeah, we did notice that uh, he's, whoever was running that elected to put a fire team in there rather than just the driver gunner. What was the uh, reasoning behind that? Uh, I have no idea. Like I said, I let my squad leaders kind of run the show and sometimes they make good choices and sometimes they make you know, I, it's it's hard to tell you know maybe he was transporting them just to get him up further or something like that i don't know yeah so i have one more question unless tedish has something um and i guess the question i want to ask is you guys are both veteran commanders in these ops what is one thing or or some things when you see someone and you're like yes they're squadding on my team like, what makes you say that about someone? Like, what kind of qualities that maybe a squad leader has in an op that might be different from um, regular, like, vanilla play? Uh, really, it's being able to do things without being told. Like, not having to, like, I mean, it's okay to be like, all right, command, what, what's what's next? And like, what, what do you need to do next? But somebody who just takes the initiative and is like, all right, command, this is what I think we should do. And, and then, you know, they give you give you some input because, like, I, I like input as, as command. Like, I don't like having to be the, the only guy coming up with a plan, the only person who's, like, making decisions. I like having everybody like, this is this is good. Like, we should we should try this and, and just having a lot of input from everybody. Um, for me, I think it's kind of like uh, a squad leader that communicates because it helps the whole team and uh, kind of an aggressive nature, especially when you're assaulting. Uh, like like Shadow was saying, somebody who has their own initiative. And I think really for me, the biggest thing is somebody who understands how to work their fire teams and uh, doesn't want to overcommit like the entire squad to a contact if they send up a buddy pair or a fire team to make contact and then use the other element to flank is like one of the biggest qualities I like, oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. I can definitely put him on the front and he will take care of any contacts we come into. So that's what I look for. I, that's, that I get excited. I, there's a couple guys that, that squad lead all the time that I get kind of pumped up like, yeah, they're on my team. I know what, I know what I'm going to make them do. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got a, a follow up to that. And that's like a lot of people are, you know, probably thinking oh man this commanding it, it doesn't look that hard like what are some things commanding that don't aren't apparent from the outside looking in i know for squad leading it's like there's a lot of communication going on um commanding what do you what do you feel most people don't realize is happening it's placement of squads i i i'd say like some ops it's good to have your guys completely spread out, you know, like 100, 200 meters apart. Or in other ops, it's it's good to have your guys, you know, in like three or, or your squad in like three or four buildings. And and it's a lot of thought. Like it, it's it's hard to know if you should disperse your guys or keep them compact. And that's and and like after an op, like I'm like, well, should I have had them closer? Maybe if they they were closer, they'd have had more support. Or maybe if they were further apart, we'd have been able to 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 reinforce them on a flank something like that and I, and that's really what it is just it what what i think is is really hard about command is just where exactly you're gonna put your squads yeah i think uh so like command is in squad ops is kind of like two part one part is like you want to make sure everybody's having a good time that everybody's kind of like got a task and they're doing something uh, to feel like they're participating and the other part is kind of um like I always say, it's always great to have a plan, but as soon as the first shot is fired, it, it goes out the window. And I think for for me as a commander, I think the hardest part is just having good situational awareness and being able to come up with a plan on the fly that helps my team succeed in whatever task or goal that we're set out to do. Like, you know, defense is somewhat easy, but, you know, if you send out a, if you know, you have one squad and you have a bunch of squads on the outside, if you don't collapse your defense soon enough, if maybe your squad leaders aren't paying attention, it's like you can, your team can get devastated. And, and I think the hardest thing for me to, as a commander is probably um, initiating that and making sure my squad leaders are falling back and making the right call. And sometimes I, I don't do that. And so for me, it's, it, 
I like commanding, but uh, you know, squad leading is 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 cool too. But I think for a commander, it's um, it looks easy, but it's it's not. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I, I want to thank both of you guys for, um, um, you know, keeping everyone moving on, even though we had some weird technical difficulties and then stopping in um, after to, to, to chat with us. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, yeah great. It was kind of cool. It was kind of cool, cool to actually command the same kind of thing twice, like defense twice and for Shadow probably assaulting twice. Oh, yeah. We definitely had to reevaluate our plan after the first round or first half round. Awesome. Um, that's what I like to hear. Um, so I want to thank um, everyone who's who's uh, came out to watch. We're streaming to like uh, six different places, um, if you don't know. Um, so if you're watching on, on Squad Ops, Twitch, or YouTube, um, thank you. Um, if you're watching anywhere else, um, we know we do stream uh, on Squad Ops uh, YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Squad Ops as well as the Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash squad ups. Uh, we do that once on Wednesdays and twice on Saturdays. Um, we also have a Discord. If anyone has any like lingering questions that maybe didn't get answered, it's a great place to come and ask them um, and come and just, out. you know, yeah, just hang out, talk to, uh, talk to, you know, you can talk to, I mean, everyone is there, everyone from the staff, the commanders to, you know, every, to people who are just interested in squad who maybe don't even play the ops yet. So. Um, I would I would encourage you guys to come check out the Squad Ops platforms, which again is twitch.tv slash squad ups and youtube.com slash squad ups. Um, you know, we upload VODs to the YouTube channel and all that stuff. So it's a great way to kind of check out what the ops are about uh, and maybe check out some ops you maybe haven't played in yet and get a feel for them. Uh, I want to thank Tedish uh, for co commenting with me. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. Always, always a pleasure. It's a lot of work, but um, I, I, it's always fun. Um, and uh, I also want to thank Penn, who's the guy behind the scenes who's making all this happen. He's the one switching scenes. He's the one, um, do, you know, doing the directing. So um, he, he's the he's the mystery man that no one sees. Uh, so thanks to him. Thanks to everyone who provides cameras for us. Um, wouldn't be able to do any of this without people taking their own time to, you know, set up their own, you know, uh, broadcasting platform and, and stream to us. So. Thanks to them. Um, and, you know, I, I hope to see you guys out here again. Again, it's Wednesdays and twice on Saturday. Um, come check us out. Uh, my name is Marty. Um, I was here with Tedish, um, and I'm super looking forward to seeing you guys um, continue to be involved with, with the ops and more broadly with the squad ops community. So thank you guys, and we will see you on Saturday.